Yes, this is Reese Miller for OSM Vision, and this is Jim for Beginners. Now, I'm no professional, just a guy with loads of experience that's gone from this to this multiple times. So if you break your arm off while doing this, don't blame me. So you might hear some people talking about what's a rep, what's a set, I'm gonna get into all of that, right? So a rep is basically a repetition. If someone said to you, all right, do eight reps of a bicep curl. This is a bicep curl, right? That movement there is one rep, one repetition. So eight reps would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah? And then you get arms like these. Next, we're gonna talk about what a set is. Like I displayed before with the eight reps, that would be one set. So after those eight reps, and someone says, all right, for example, we want you to do three sets. You would repeat that eight three times. So this will be my second set. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We take a rest. We walk around and we go again. This is the third set. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Successful three sets. Remember guys, warm up before your workout. You don't wanna throw your leg out of whack or your hip out of whack, right? Warm ups are very important. Five minute cardio, 10 minute cardio, 15 minute cardio. When you're strength training, the weight light on your first set or even your first two sets. Warm up, guys. What do I know? I'm just a dude named this. Peace. When you first enter the gym, it can be proper overwhelming. You don't really know what to do. But I would say, look around, man, and pick what you think will look fun. Talk to the personal trainers and get their advice. Don't be afraid to talk to people. Now, what I would say is, my favorite exercise is the bicep curl. So I would advise you to pick the one that looks the lightest. I know you see all the weights and you want to lift the heaviest thing possible. Don't do that, you're going to hurt yourself. I'm going to show you a basic bicep curl because we all want big arms. What do you think your lady wants when you hug her? Some little noodle arms? Or does she want a big gazer to find? Grab her and make her feel safe. Get big arms. So, nice posture and you want to twist and curl. Hence dumbbell curl. Curl. You want to keep your back straight, slow and controlled. Yeah? You don't want to be swinging the weight. We're not, we're not, we're not doing that, right? And when you come down on the eccentric, scientific right there, is it? Well, you know, we're just gonna keep it basic. When you come down, you wanna come down slow as you can. Slow as you can. You should start to feel that burn in the bicep. Simple as that, man. Curling, curls for the girls. Got that from Beast Mo Jones, OG. Do your Googles. You wanna make sure you put your weights back. It's good gym etiquette. Less work for the PTs that work here and it's less confusing for the people trying to look for a weight. You're gonna notice every gym has like a different etiquette. Yeah, you wanna kind of find out what your one is. Like most gyms, you clean off the equipment after you're wearing. Most gyms, you put your weight back. People look at you funny if you don't know the culture of the gym. How am I looking? Am I looking sexy? No? Um, work to do. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're going to do five for today. Now, I don't know if you can tell. But on the fifth one, you could see that I was starting to really feel it. 
So by rep six or seven, I'd have been struggling. That's when you know you're at a decent weight. And then, yeah, for the last set, you're gonna go to 32s. So your one, for example, you might jump on 10, as in 10 kilo to kilograms, and you might feel that, wow, 10 for me, at about six to eight reps is a lot. That should be your last one then, right? And then you might wanna start at six for your first set. Go to eight for your second set, and for your third set, get to tens. I recommend when you're starting, you wanna do three sets of six to eight reps. So even if, this is just me by the way, again, not an expert, this is just what works for me. When you start on the sixes, you probably won't feel the challenge, but that's okay. The challenge comes at the second and third set. What's vital in training is warming up. So what I like to do is I like to do about 15 minutes of cardio. So I'll start on an incline walk, I'll go to the cross trainer and I do the mic, uh, mic, the bike. Five minutes, five minutes, five minutes. And then as I showed you before, I like to start on a really, really, really light weight just to get the blood flowing. Because if you don't warm up, you're gonna mess yourself up. It's all about avoiding injury, man. Avoiding injury. If you want the six pack for the ladies, no good if you throw your back out, right? Cameraman, what are we saying? We ready for the third set? Let's go. All right, so now this is the, this is the challenge for me. 32s to 34. We're not gonna go for the full five today, but we're gonna see how many we can get. So, as you advance more, that's when you can kind of get creative with the gym and go for, you might have heard of one rep maxes or four to six reps and do that when you're a little bit more advanced. Yeah, because you want to gradually increase the volume. When you increase the volume, that's going to build more muscle. So for me, because I've been doing it a while, even if I can go to maybe 34s, and I think, like, do you know what? With proper form, I want to get about one to two reps. It's still something that your body's not used to. So that gradual overload increases the muscle. But remember, you've got to have the right nutrition as well, but it's for another video. So another one of my favorite exercises is the shoulder press. Even though my shoulder's out of whack, but I'm not giving it up. To build a well-rounded physique, bro, I would say you want to focus on the back, shoulders, arms, chest. Most of you want to get jacked. Um, we're going to get onto the legs, but for now, we're going to do the shoulder press. So, start light, as I said, very light. Leave the ego at home. Right now, you just want to get some blood into the muscle. So we start light, back straight, drive up. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Nice little warm-up set. You should feel, feel warm at this point. And then what I like to do is drop the weight, I don't know, semi-difficult, difficult, and then extremely difficult. Now again, when you get more advanced, you can start adding more sets. You might want to do four sets, five sets, or you, want to, or you might want to split them. So you might do three sets in this session, and then you might come again, I don't know, it's Monday today, you might do show, a bit of shoulders on Wednesday and do two more sets. You don't have to do it all in one. Now, here's something I like to do. If your target is fat loss, 
What I like to do in between sets is I like to walk. I like to walk around and stay moving in between sets. You get more steps in, burns more calories, you lose more weight. A lot of people you'll see they sit on their phone or they just sit there. I like to be proactive. So some people might look at you like you're crazy. They look at me funny, like what's this guy doing? Like he's just walking around the gym, but I'm staying moving. I'm increasing my step count. That's right, we're gonna go for the first set now. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So then what I would do is I'll start walking around. Talk to people that you might know. These are the times to have your conversations. Keep moving. Again, this is mainly if your target is fat loss. If you're trying to bulk, probably won't advise this. Again, not an expert, just a guy with experience. Don't come for me. So, what I would usually do is actually do a lap, do two laps around the whole gym. That would take me about two minutes, three minutes. And by the time I'm back, I'm ready for the next set. So, we're gonna lower it again. We're gonna go for a difficult one. Might even need a bit more rest there. Not a spring chicken anymore. All right. one we're going to lift the rack but as I said as you're a beginner you might just want to sit and rest me I like to get up and walk around again I'm a bit fatigued from yesterday's session so we're going to see if we can go for about four to five reps but again what I recommend for you as a beginner is you want to keep in the six to eight range so right now why I'm a bit weaker, or not technically weaker, but I have less energy, because right now I'm on a cut. A cut is literally where you're, uh, you're burning more than you consume to reduce fat, right? So let's just say, for example, to maintain my current weight, I need to eat about 2,500 calories. I'm in a caloric deficit and I may eat 1,900. Therefore, it's a little bit harder to push in the gym. However, you wanna maintain the strength so you keep the muscle, right? So you have a better physique overall. Because it's all about the muscle gain. You wanna maximize muscle and minimize the fat. That gives you a great composition. All right. Let's see, let's see how many we can get. Cameraman, how much do you think I can get on the whole rack? Put, pull up a number on your hand. How much do you think I can get? Yeah. All right, let's see if we can get the four. Let's go. Beautiful. Love a good pump. All right, let's move on. Ah, a lot of gyms you want to wipe down your your machine afterwards. There's always some tissues near. Funny enough, 
I only noticed this cleaning epidemic coming full swing after the, we had to say pandemic. That's when it really got a bit, bit mad. And as well as being overwhelmed, you want to take your time, man. It's a journey, it's a process. There's no need to rush. This is like a lifelong learning thing that we're doing here, yeah? So one tip that I would give you when you first enter a gym is you're gonna go up to the biggest guy there and go, oi, I'm gonna be bigger than you one day. No, I'm joking, don't, don't, don't do that. But basically take your time, man, take your time. And get advice from everyone, like with me telling you tips, go to other fitness channels and you wanna treat it like a fruit salad, like you wanna think, all right, that doesn't really subscribe to me, I'm gonna take a bit of that, I'm gonna take a bit of this, take a bit of this, and then you make it your own. That's what I've done over the years, yeah? Cause you're not gonna agree with 100% of things that people say. And a lot of it is trial, error, trial, error. What I'm telling you to do might not work for you, but what Guy B tells you, you might think, do you know what, that suits me better. You might like the tip I gave you about taking steps in between your sets. So you might say, all right, cool. I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna take from another fitness influencer. I'm gonna take from this, I'm gonna take from this guy. I'm gonna make my own fruit salad. That's the best way to approach it if you ask me. And you want to get a routine and a diet plan that you can stick with for the long term. Trust me, I've lost weight and gained it all back plus more before doing extreme diets. You don't want to do that. So now we're going to move on to a little bit about nutrition. Again, I'm no expert, just a guy with experience. Don't sue. Cool. All right, guys, forgive me. I'm not a professional at this YouTube gym fitness thing, so hopefully you can follow me. I'm just going to tell you what I do to help me lose fat. So you want to find your maintenance calories, right? Your maintenance calories is the amount of energy, see calories as energy, that you put into your body to maintain your weight, right? So if you look online, they might say the average for, the average man might be 2,500 calories. Now, where do I find calories? Calories are on most products that we eat. When you go into Tesco, Sainsbury's, whatever, look at the back, the nutrition is there, right? So let's just say you need 2,500 calories to maintain the weight that you have, right? You, if you want to lose fat, and I promote fat, not weight, because that's two different things, right? You want to lose fat. You want to be in a caloric deficit, meaning, as I said upstairs, you are burning more than you consume. So if you can find your maintenance, this is a tricky thing to do because you're gonna really need to constantly weigh yourself. And what I did, I'm not recommending this, but I'm just telling you what worked for me, is I picked a number. And I said, okay, let me try the recommended amount of 2,500 calories. And then I cut it by 300. So I said, okay, that could be, <coughs> excuse me, that could be uh, two packets of crisps that you cut out. That could be an apple or a banana you cut out, wouldn't recommend it. but. That's how you do it. And you cut that out and you keep track of your weight over a weekly period. And if you see that you're maintaining, you need to cut the calories further, right? So let's just say you are a, I'm gonna go in pounds. You are a 200 pound man, right? And then you pick a number and you say, right, I'm gonna go for 2,500 calories, right? You consistently eat that amount for a week and then you weigh yourself at the end of the week and see where you are. Now, if you've begun a new gym routine, expect weight loss on the scale. Remember I said the difference between weight and fat? Weight loss on the scale is mostly gonna be water, right? Our body retains water um, when we eat foods that are high in sodium, high in salt, high in saturated fat, and just in general. So you're going to see a significant drop. So that doesn't necessarily mean you're in a big enough deficit. Really, I would say, give it about two, two and a half weeks. Then, if you notice that, mm, I'm about, I don't know, 197. I would say, drop it a bit further. Drop another 100 calories out. Because then, if you're consistent with your training, most of the water should be out. And then you really get a gauge of if you're dropping pound, a pound, a pound, week by week by week. What you will notice in the gym 
is regular weight fluctuations, right? The scale going up and down. We do not want to rely too much on the scale. See a scale as one tool of the many in your toolbox, right? So the scale is one. How your clothes are fitting you is one. How people are responding to you is one. How you feel is one. Do you have more energy? Do you just feel lighter? Do you feel better in yourself? All these are tools in your toolbox. The weight, I mean the scale, excuse me, is just one. So, kind of an important one, but you don't want to get obsessed with it. When I was talking about water retention, etc. But yeah, so remember the toolbox, right? The scale is just one in the toolbox. Let's just say you found your caloric deficit. Let's just say, right, I'm losing a pound a week at 1,900 calories or 2,000 or whatever it might be. Because remember, this is going to change depending on person to person. If you're taller, if you're shorter, if you have more muscle, if you have less muscle. So everyone needs to find their own one. And there are some calculators online for you to use. As a rough estimate, just type in uh, find my maintenance calories on uh, Google and it will ask you to put in your height, your weight, male, female, etc. And it will give you a rough estimate. So you can try that as well. But let's just say you found your caloric deficit now and then you're like, oh snap, I'm not losing weight. Um, there is such thing as a weight loss plateau, but don't panic. So a weight loss plateau is where your body basically gets used to what you're doing and you stop making progress. So that would usually mean you need to uh, increase the intensity of your workouts or drop your calories a bit lower. But don't panic yet. Just because the scale was not moving week to week does not mean you're not making progress. Give it time. Give it time, bro. Like I would say about, give it two to three weeks and if you're consistently getting the same number on the scale, then you can think, all right, do you know what? I'm going to increase my cardio for, from about, for about five to 10 more minutes, or I'm going to drop my calories by 100. Now, if you want to know how to track your calories, there's a sit app that I use, bust me still, My Fitness Pal, right? Get me, get me phone out. Hope the nudes don't come up. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. So we got, can I show the camera? All right, so we got my fitness pal here, yeah? Um, I don't want you to pay attention to my numbers, obviously, I, I know what I'm doing. But here, you can literally track what you're having. So today, I've had two slices of bread, two whole eggs, an apple, Milky Way, and a packet of crisps. That's my breakfast, right? If you want to add, you scan the barcode of the back of the item, tells you the calories, boom, so you can keep track, yeah? Now, I know some of you see Milky Way, chocolate bar, no, yes, yes. Because I preach balance, bro, balance. We've seen the guys online, we, we know who we're talking about, right? That tell you to have these strict, crazy diets. Bro, you want something you can stick to, right? You want to have some healthy stuff with some stuff that you enjoy. It's for the long term. And at the end of the day, it's calories in, calories out. You could eat a pizza, right? One slice of pizza every day for 30 days. You're going to lose weight. You're going to feel terrible. I'll tell you that because it's not nutritious. But you will still lose weight because it's the amount of energy you're putting into the vehicle, your body the vehicle, versus how much you're burning. Right? And if you're eating one slice of pizza, which is maybe what, 300, 400 calories, and then you're in the gym burning five to 600, your body's gonna have to use fat for energy. So it's not what you eat all the time, right? So you wanna maintain that balance, man. We wanna enjoy our life, right? Now, if you're competing and you wanna be on like a bodybuilder stage, different story. But we just wanna graduate. We just wanna graduate to a great physique and get to 100% sexy. I'm gonna help you do that. One thing I tell you to incorporate into your workout, bro, is cardio. I've seen enough man come in the gym and they're just lifting weights, thinking that they're healthy. That don't make you healthy, bro. Where's your cardiovascular health? That's your heart health. With me, if I don't get cardio in, I don't feel like I've done a proper workout. You get me? 
the muscle man that just... But they can't run. Remember I said I warm up, five minutes, five minutes, five minutes. So, it don't have to be nothing too crazy, man. It don't have to be a David Goggins. Deal with that. That, that, that cycle. Right? I like to get a nice incline. Decent speed. Let's go for about a five. You can hold on here. This will give you your heart rate. Or you can just walk. Let me put my phone there. All right? And you just walk for five minutes. All right? That's going to get the blood flowing. The body warm. Ready for the gal there. <laughs> cool. Five minutes on that. That obviously wasn't five minutes, but we get the drift. Then I would move on to five minutes on the cross trainer. Set it to a decent level. Go with what works best for you. Five minutes, man. Now, every gym's machines are gonna be different. This is actually my first time using this machine in this gym. I'll go to two. Simple as that, man. So we did five minutes on there. We're gonna do five minutes on here. And then, five minutes on. Can I swear? No? I can swear. The bastard. This is the bastard right here. The Stairmaster. It looks easy. It really ain't. Especially if you set it to a decent level. You want to get five minutes on here, bro. You're going to get a proper sweat going. faster again it's my first time using this machine in this gym so every level is going to be a bit different depending on the gym you go to so for example if you got if you do level 10 at your gym and you try a new gym level 10 might be much harder on their their machine different companies different machines so five minutes on here and that's a 15 minute warm up. All right, cool. So for my main cardio, I like to do about 50 minutes on the treadmill, but on an incline at a steady pace, right? You don't need to do that. Do what works for you. Start small and build it up, right? So for you, five minutes might be challenging. That's fine, right? As long as it's a challenge to the body, you're gonna see progress. It's something your body's not used to. Once five minutes starts to get easy, you do 10 minutes. Once 10 minutes starts to get easy, you do 15 minutes and so on and so on. So for example, remember we spoke about the calories in, calories out and the caloric deficit. Let's just say in one session on the treadmill, you burn, let's say 500 calories, right? And you know your maintenance calories to maintain your weight is 2,500. You burning that now puts you at 2,000, right? But remember, it's very easy to uh, eat that 500 calories back again. So you have to be careful. Don't just think, oh, I've burnt the 500. I'm good. I can snack and eat this. Keep that in mind. And a lot of these machines, they're not 100% accurate. So you want to make room for about 20, 30% error, right? So keep that in mind. Yeah, here's one of my favorites, the pull-up, yeah? The pull-up is going to build your back. You want a nice full physique yeah and a lot of people would say it starts with the back my back is my weakest part it's woeful woeful meaning bad so i'm working on it but i love a good pull up right so full extension up down up down up down up down now i would like to do about oops, i must trip I like to do about 
10 reps. Um, if you can't do one pull up, in your gym there is usually an assisted machine. Let's see if I can find one. Remember, I'm new here, so I'm still learning where everything is. Sorry, guys, do you have a, um, I'm trying to teach people how to use the assisted pull up machine? Do you have one here? No, nah, okay, All right. So it's a gym for warriors, so they don't have the, the assisted one. So in other gyms, they usually have a machine that assists you if you can't do one pull up, yeah? Um, Google it, Google it. It's not hard to find if you can't do one. But yeah, we'll go for another couple. And when you get really advanced, you can add weight to the pull up and you can buy a weight belt, right? Don't know if that's the technical term. As I said, I'm not a professional. Um, and you add, let's just say for example, one of these to the belt, two, three of them, will go in between your legs. You'll see bodybuilders doing it and it assists, not assists, sorry, but it's added tension to the pull-up. So we'll go again. Beautiful. Woo! Like that one there. I'll be honest with you, genetics is something I want to get into. I've got quite good chest genetics, so I don't really train chest too much. My body seems to respond really well to it, but this is a workout I quite like, chest press. So again, when you're trying to find your weight, start light. Because if you just go for something heavy straight away, you're going to injure yourself. You're more prone to injury. You just want blood in the area. a nice little warm-up set and if you're taller or shorter there's always adjustments on the machine that you can use for your height if it doesn't feel good you'll know when it doesn't feel good if you feel pain then you likely need to adjust the machine there's there's a I would like to say there's a difference between discomfort and pain discomfort is the feeling you feel when you're repping it out and it, and it burns. Pain is almost like something in your joint. Like, yeah, this feels like my arm's gonna snap off type shit. We don't want that. So now, we go to the first proper set. And yeah, maybe we can just B-roll some shit. thing, alright? Do you know why? Because we fucking chat, alright? Imagine I float. <laughs> alright, let's go. So these times, when you're getting your steps in and you're walking around, look at your gains in the mirror. Get motivated. Get gassed up. Be proud. Be proud. Proud.
even if you can't see nothing. You don't see the biceps coming yet. You don't see the quads coming yet. Envision that shit. Let the lack of motivate you. I think one day, I'm gonna graduate. Graduate to 100% sexy. We're gonna get there, guys. We're gonna get there. All right, we go again. One more time. Beautiful. One thing I do love to do is the calf raises, bro. Love it. This is like, this is actually the first time I've actually got to do the standing ones. Because at my main gym, I only got the, uh, there's one that you sit down in. So, we're gonna fucking rack it again. All right? Big upper upper body. First thing people are gonna look at is the legs. Now, some people just got whack genetics for calves. Nothing you can do about that if you if that's your case. But always work it, man. Because it's still about muscle insertions. That's for a, another video. Luckily, I think I got decent ones. However. I do have one calf bigger than the other one. Jory. Cameraman, make sure you don't, you don't pick that up. I had to get about three sets of those. I'm not even free today though. Hi. Excuse me, burping. I had a cheat day yesterday. Do you want to know what I had? Leave that for another day. But um, yes, the lateral raises. This is what we're going to do now. Light weight with this. You do not need to go heavy. Leave the ego at home, please. You're going to brock up your shoulder like I did. And then when you're in the bedroom, you're not going to... Another video. Another video. Cool. You want your back straight and you want to extend, bam, get right there, bam, 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 you want to build those shoulders, bro, you want some nice rounded shoulders, that's going to get you jacked, people looking at you in the beach like, I don't want to mess with that fighting gazer. So this is the shoulder. Lateral raises, we're working the shoulder, all right? We're working this part of the shoulder, yeah? Gives you that nice round, you know what I'm saying? Now, I'm gonna perform the standing lateral raise. Very simple, back straight, all right? Lift to about here, down. Lift, you don't wanna go too high, about here, straight. So your arms are straight out and down. Up and down. Up and down. You don't want to go too heavy with these ones. You really don't need to. And that's it, man. And remember, we're not all perfect. We're going to have some wobbly bits. We're going to have some bits that ain't perfect. But this is what it's about. It's a journey. And if I'm being honest with you, being in this for quite a few years, you're never really going to seek perfection. You're always going to have a part of yourself that you want to work on, but use, use that as fuel. That's what I do, and that's what most people do, because you want to keep progressing, keep progressing, keep progressing. Because if you just think, yeah, I look fine, I look perfect, are you going to really push as hard? Probably not. So you always want to be striving for more. So, what am I expected to feel after my first session? 
pain and hell. No, I'm joking. You're going to feel a little bit sore the morning after, but that's normal, man. That's normal. See it as your battle scars. And after a period of time, the soreness will go away as your body adapts to the new workout routine. Yes, hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed. If you want to know more, or there's something that we can teach you, comment below. All the one. I'm just a do name Reese. Peace.